I was close this one year. Okay. Uh, we started what you call under the nitrogen gases. I give you what you call the nitrogen gases include the nitric oxide, which is NO, nitrogen dioxide, which is N2, NO2, and we have the nitrous oxide N2O and ammonia NH3 and NO and NO2 usually make a complex, which are referred to as NOx. Do you remember that? I give you this in the beginning of what you call nitrogen gases. All right? Now, uh, last lecture, the first paragraph we talk about is the ammonia. And the last thing I mentioned to you in this regard, that the residence time, it means in the air, of NH3 in the atmosphere is about seven days. And then in this case, the NH3 is eventually oxidized to nitrate. Did you follow that? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now we're going to continue what you call here with the, under the title nitrous oxide. Now continue under the nitrous oxide, which is N2O. Now this nitrous oxide also sometimes, if you hear it about, is also known as the laughing gas. Okay. Now, so to continue about this one here, just give me a second. Okay. Now, uh, simply according to this gas here, did you follow this one here? All right. Uh, did you see my writing is okay here? Okay. Now, basically this one is a colorless. Okay, is a colorless and also non-toxic gas. Okay. That to produce. Okay, a mild known as a mild euphoria. that produce a mild euphoria, euphoria when inhaled. And as I mentioned to this class here, no, we call it also, to make sure between two brackets, also known as, okay, laughing gas. Okay, that is the N2O. And also because of that, it is used as a mild anesthetic. Okay. is used as a mild anesthetic and sometimes as a recreational gas and sometimes okay as as I mentioned to you as a recreational gas okay And because this gas basically is not a reactive one, uh, 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 that's why basically it, it will stay in the uh, in the air for a while. And to mention this point, because N two O, okay, is a rather okay and reactive and reactive. Compound, this is compound here. This is compound as an reactive compound. It has a long radiance in the atmosphere. It has a long, sorry, uh, residence. in the in the atmosphere, okay? And basically, uh, sometimes it takes in the atmosphere almost around four years, okay? To mention this to you about uh, four years, okay? 
And now basically to mention that, uh, what you call, uh, what are <clears throat> the sources which basically produce this type of gas, to mention this point here, that, uh, okay, and this one here, that most, okay, N2O emission are associated Okay, uh, to mention a few points here, uh, as well, what? one is with microbial denitrification. Okay. With microbial denitrification, basically in soil and water. Okay, and basically, uh, because of this is basically as a lot of agriculture and others, so basically it produced about in total, uh, just put this one, about 18 million tons per year. Okay. So this is one point. Now, the other also source of that, what you call industrial emission. Also come from industrial emission. And industrial emission is basically it produces something around 6 million tons per year. Okay. And also, we may have what you call, uh, as I mentioned, that agricultural soil fertilized. Sorry. Agricultural. Sorry. Okay. Um, soil uh, fertilized. Okay, of course, fertilized with nitrate. Okay. And basically the soil fertilized with nitrate usually can produce a high amount of this N2O. Can have, okay, a high rate. Okay, of N2O emission, okay? And that's why you find basically these, uh, what you call the a new practice of agriculture produce quite a bit of this, okay? To mention this point here, okay? In this regard here, and modern uh, agricultural Okay, uh, practices, okay, are thought, okay, uh, to, in, uh, okay, I thought, sorry, to have increased, okay, to have increased as a matter of fact, what you call the global emission, of course, global emission of this gas, which is N2O, global emission, okay, uh, by almost, by about, almost by 40%. Did you follow that? So that will have increased the global emission roughly about by 40% of, of these, uh, uh, what you call, uh, uh, present or pre uh, agricultural practices. Is that clear? Did you follow this okay, please? Okay. Uh, now going to move to another one here, okay, which is basically known as the nitric oxide. Because this was, always remember this one, this one is nitrous oxide. 
Now we're going to deal here now. Okay. okay. With nitric oxide. And for it is N O. Okay. And we're going to see both here. Now, nitric oxide itself, this one here, is a colorless, also is a color, okay? And also at the same time, without odor, and is colorless and also odorless. Gas. If we compare this with what you call with nitrogen dioxide, while uh, nitrogen dioxide, which is basically NO2, okay, is reddish in color, is reddish, okay, and also pungent. Okay, and also at the same time, uh, it basically it affects what you call and irritates. Give me a second here to take this out. Okay, and then I'll continue with that. And irritates, or on the same matter, okay, irritates the respiratory eye, uh, and eye membranes. The, and irritates the, okay, the respiratory, okay, and also and eye membranes. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> now, remember what's mentioned here, that, <clears throat> that the mixture of NO and NO2, what's going to result to what? What do you call it? I, I mentioned to you in the beginning. What do you call it? It makes a complex known as NOx, and that's why I'm going to mention about it. So, okay, and thus here, okay, natural emission because of these two gases, NO and A2, okay? That's natural emission, okay, of NOx, which is the complex, okay? are about okay roughly uh, uh, about basically 430 million uh, tons per year okay all right This is uh, complex here, okay? Just pay attention with me a little bit here. Now, because this is a mixture of NO2 and NO. So basically produce about, this is a result of 430 million tons, okay? Of per year, basically this is as NO, okay? <clears throat> and as NO2, okay, the emission is about, Okay, um, about 658 million tons per year. Did you follow that? You follow this point. Now, do you have any question, please? 
No, yeah. going to mention, of course, the okay. source is of that, and, and also the source, is a, as a matter of fact, is mostly from the bacterial nitrification of the soil. Okay, the mention is your point here. Now, excuse the, me, sir. Yes, Could you please. just move the page up a little bit? This one here or this one? You, you finish on this the one? Bottom one. Yeah, you finish on this yes. one. Okay, in that case, give me a second here. I will make sure. Uh, is it okay like this now? Yes, thank you. Okay, good. <laughs> and now, uh, at the moment, I'm going to mention about what you call the source of this, what you call all this. Now, uh, the important source of natural emission, or simply to mention here, the important Uh, source, okay, of called natural, okay, emission or emissions of this is the complex N O X as emission are bacterial, okay, denitrification. This bacterial denitrification of nitrate of nitrate and soil. Okay. This is one thing. Okay. This is one of, of the soil. And also to mention to you, so and also fixation, the other source, fixation. Okay, of atmospheric nitrogen. Okay, which is N or N2, that atmospheric nitrogen is always N2. By lightening. And also, and we call it an oxidation biomass that will, will basically occur when there is a, uh, what you call fires, okay? And oxidation biomass, okay, of nitrogen. Which means it means of nit and two of nitrogen. Okay, and during fires, like forest fires and other fires. Okay. Uh, this, of course, we talk about is mostly as a, a natural thing here, okay? And uh, now the other point I'm going to mention with regard to what you call the anthropogenic emission of the nitric oxide that basically is going to come as a matter of fact of industrial and also from cars and power plants to mention this point here now, okay? Anthropogenic. emission of this nitrous oxide, okay, the results, okay, from, this is what we call, from the combustion of fossil fuels <clears throat> okay especially okay in cars and power plants Okay. And I just put here between two brackets. Usually, uh, the anthropogenic uh, emission usually produces 
Commission about okay commission about uh, 65 million uh, tons per year okay Now, uh, this emission, as a matter of fact, to explain what's going to happen here, they are most in the beginning, it comes as what you call uh, nitrite oxide, but later on, be oxidized basically in the atmosphere into nitrogen dioxide. To make this point for you here, okay? To mention here, for example, these emissions, okay? are mostly okay what do you call it nitric oxide put it down here which is the no remember the one we call the no here okay and then what happened here this is later on which secondarily Okay, oxidized. Okay, to nitrogen dioxide. Which is basically NO2. That occur as a matter of fact, by reactions in the atmospheres. Okay. You follow this point here. So that basically what I mentioned to you here that it, that basically this emission comes as nitric oxide, but secondarily it becomes what you call oxidized in the atmosphere as nitrogen dioxide. Okay. And in the end, of course, these are ultimately will be oxidized in the atmosphere into nitrate, okay, into nitrate, and to mention this point here, okay. And ultimately, okay, most atmospheric, okay, which is basically the become this complex nitrogen oxide complex, which is this one here. This is not okay. This is okay. These are basically gases. Okay, become oxidized. Okay, to nitrate. They become up to nitrate, which is basically NO3, which has a negative charge. Okay. And that is becomes when it becomes in the atmosphere as a nitrate, this one in the end become a source of the acid precipitation. To mention to you this one, which is anions. Okay, that is important. Okay, that is important as a matter of fact. And the acidification. Okay. Of 
the precipitation and also an ecosystem. Okay. So that basically gives us an idea how these gases uh, uh, react and how this basically in the end will change into nitrate, which in the end becomes basically acidifying what you call the, of course, the precipitation and of course, as a result, the ecosystem and lakes and so on. So basically, these are basically to explain about these, what you call uh, the complexity of these, what you call the nitrogen uh, gases in general. Is that clear? Okay. Yeah, now basically I would like to talk about the, this, the toxicity of these nitrogen gases, but I would like to, to summarize it rather than make it a, what you call. Uh, so basically we have a subtitle here. Okay, toxicity. Of nitrogen gases. Now to mention to you here one point, I want to make it as simple that okay, as possible as can. Now in the beginning, I'm going to mention, of course, sometimes it is rare. Okay, that uh, the concentration. And to make it in points, that the concentrations in general. Okay, of of course ammonia. In H3, or okay, the complex okay, gases are high enough enough to injure vegetation. Now, I put another point here. However, of course, it has a damage of environmental thing. To mention this point, the environmental damage Okay, the environmental damage, of course, being associated Of course, with this the complex with this uh, with the this nitrogen NOx include okay. I'm putting put a point here that uh, on uh, once it may become too complex for you. Include as a matter of fact, we call it here. Include uh, the photochemical. Okay, reactions that because as a result, of course, of the light of the light of the sunlight and also uh, uh, the UV and also reaction by which okay ozone. Okay. And of course, ozone, as a matter of fact, is a very toxic gas, intimation, which is, I put between two brackets here, a much, a much, okay, more toxic gas. This is, of course, it result in the end in the production of, of ozone, okay, of ozone is a produce by which ozone is the produced. Okay. 
And of course, as already we mentioned to you here, and also the acidification plus the also, and also put it down here. And also, of course, the acidification of precipitation and ecosystem, and also the acidification of precipitation and ecosystems. Okay, so basically what we understood from this, that these two, as a matter of fact, is uh, that maybe it does not affect the vegetation, but the important thing that basically this, the nitrogen oxide complex, in, in the end, as a result of the photochemical reaction, it may result in the production of ozone, which is a more, what you call, toxic gas, and plus, of course, already you mentioned about the acidification. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't like it to. Okay. I just mentioned one sentence. This one here. I'm not going to go to the detail of how many parts per million which affect the human and so on, but just in general, I'm going to mention this point here for you. Okay. The other going to mention basically that for a human. Okay, we call the amb ambient, okay, concentration of uh, the ammonia NH3 and NOx, okay, are really high enough to bother humans. Okay, but of course, don't forget that also human, they vary by their sensitivity. Uh, some people may not be affected, but others could be affected here. But of course, what happened here, any gases for long term in the end will produce some sort of damage. Okay. You follow this point here? And then I'm going to move to another title, it's still with the gases here. Just give me a second. Okay. And then I'm going to start with the other one here, the title here, which is called Organic Gases and Vapor. And vapors, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk about this one here as a matter of fact. Uh, most of these are the hydrocarbon. Now, hydrocarbons like methane and others, hydro. The carbons, okay, basically as you know, are these are, are diverse the group. And did you finish from this one here? Okay. Uh, under organic and gases and vapor, we call hydrocarbons are diverse group, a group basically of uh, uh, chemicals. Okay, uh, basically, as you know, with molecular structure. Okay, 
simply containing. Okay, various combinations. Okay, of hydrogen. and carbon. This is one point to mention here. Now we're going to mention this point here, the other point, that the simplest hydrocarbon okay, is methane. which is basically CH4, okay? Yeah, I don't like to make a complex here with the, okay. Um, now, simply to mention this, basically, that the origin of this one is going to come, it makes it more easier here, about talking about other things. Uh, simply to mention that most emission of CH4 which is the methane, are natural. Okay, and are associated. Okay, uh, with the fermentation. Okay, with the fermentation of organic matter okay uh, by microbes okay uh, for example like uh, what you call uh, 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 that occur in anaerobic, in, for example, in wetland and so on, to mention by organic matter, by microbes, okay, in anaerobic, okay, wetlands, okay. And there is a, a smaller comfort, basically, uh, for optimization to you here, just to continue with this one here. Uh, yeah, and to mention the other point, also smaller amount Okay, it comes from uh, fossil fuel deposit from a fossil we call uh, fuel. Uh, deposits. Okay. <clears throat> and also it comes from also from small and also to make it also smaller amount. Basically, this is, it becomes from, what you call, uh, from wildfires, okay, and also smaller amount also comes to, forget that, basically also from, also the other amount comes, the other source from what you call, you know, the ruminants, from uh, these uh, ruminants animals, 
minutes, any moves? And termites, okay, which produce Okay, uh, the methane HC4 as they digest their plant food. Okay. Uh, mention, of course, uh, this point going to mention in general, basically, that in general, basically, to mention that the global emission of uh, CH4, okay, is about roughly, is about 1.6 uh, billion. tons per year, okay? Uh, other thing I want to mention in this regard is for example, that not most of them at that atmospheric, usually hydrocarbons other than the methane, of course. Now, these two usually are referred to <clears throat> simply as None methane hydrocarbons. Okay. Uh, no, I'm not going to focus basically on the, uh, there is, uh, of course, a production of these gases also, they are anthropogenic, and also there is natural, okay, but, uh, okay, from also fires and so on, but I think it just to mention for you here, just to, uh, to be in perspective on it, I guess, the basic to mention to you here, just one point here, because these are, I'm going to mention they're important. First, I'm going to mention just to have the perspective on it, okay, that the natural emission, which you call it of the one non methane uh, hydrocarbons, okay, uh, simply to mention to you here. Uh, nice. This uh, it comes to about roughly, are about or yeah. Just to mention this point here, it comes to about two hundred million tons uh, per year. Okay, and the other point going mentioned basically the anthropogenic or from human, okay? Uh, 
the mission is about 160 million uh, tons per year. Okay. Now, the important of these gases, either the, what you call the methane and the other things, these basically, the importance of these, because they play a big role, what you call, in the greenhouse effect. And that's what we're going to mention to you here. Okay. Now, the environmental importance Okay, of these gases, and vapors, okay, that lies, because what happens when it produces, always you're going to occur photochemical reaction, of the sun and ultraviolet, and that is going to change them to something else. Okay, vapor lies mainly, okay, uh, in their, we should put here, in their role in the photochemical reactions Okay, that produces toxic ozone. Okay, a plus, of course, to mention, uh, as I mentioned, I think I put it down here. In addition, especially methane, in addition, Methane, which is the SCH4, is an important we call it a greenhouse gas. Gas. Uh, in other areas, these are to mention, of course, we have other uh, pollutant with this one, uh, sometimes basically, which is to a lesser degree, sometimes we have benzene and formaldehyde. I to mention this point here. In some workplaces, just to mention here, still in, under this, in some. Okay, in some workplaces, of course, what you mentioned to you here, that, okay, that relatively, the toxic, organic, organics, uh, such as benzene, and formaldehyde. Okay, maybe important pollutant. Okay. Do you follow this? Okay. Uh, then after that, well, yeah, okay. Uh, then this is basically we talk about the organic gases and vapor and mention basically these are the hydrocarbon. Mostly we focus, of course, mostly on, on methane. Okay. And also we talk about some of their uh, sources as the natural and also mention a little bit about the atmospheric 
uh, hydrocarbon, but also we mentioned, as a matter of fact, the importance of these, especially methane, basically as a result of what it caused in the greenhouse gases. Now we're going to talk about other gas in the air, which is basically the ozone, because ozone also we have two types of ozone. Now, this is this one here. Okay. Of course, as I mentioned to you, there are two different ozone related to environmental issues. Okay, there are two different ozones related uh, to environmental issues. Okay. Of course, ozone basically we refer to as O3. Okay. So we have one O3, which is basically in the stratosphere. Okay. And we have also O3 or ozone as a matter of fact, okay, which is in the known as in the troposphere. Okay, and usually the one in the troposphere, <coughs> uh, we refer to it as what you call as a ground level ozone. Okay. Uh, now we we'll talk a little bit about what you call the uh, stratosphere. We'll talk about this one here. Now to mention this point now, okay? I think you finished from this one, okay? Good. Uh, the high concentration. which you call it of stratosphere ozone. Okay. Which is simply to mention, of course, naturally present. Okay. And the upper atmosphere. the upper uh, atmosphere. <clears throat> uh, which is basically, uh, to give you where it is, which is normally begin or which begins. Okay, at about, okay. Uh, eight, sorry, eight uh, to 17 kilometer above the Earth's surface. Okay. And also, of course, it, it, it could vary uh, uh, to mention this, of course, depending 
in this case. Okay, on the latitude and season. Okay. Uh, of course, as a matter of optimization, in this case, basically, that is important to know that, of course, this, what you call the uh, the upper atmosphere or the stratosphere ozone, as a matter of fact, is not considered as a pollutant, okay? As a matter of fact, it has a lot of benefit for us, as you know. Let me mention this point here for you, okay? Now, uh, to mention this point here, that st stratospheric ozone, This is ozone, I put down here, stratospheric ozone, which is O3, okay. Uh, causes no damage, causes no damage, okay. And it's not, it's not air pollutant. Okay and is not air uh, pollutant. And of course, as you know, rather, okay, it absorb, okay, solar, which is, as you know, the ultraviolet, okay, radiation, And, uh, and by this, as a matter of fact, it will protect the organism, okay? And helps, and, and helps, okay, to protect uh, organisms, of course, from the, what you call, uh, from many damaging effect. from an endemic effect of exposure. Okay, to harmful part. Okay, of, we call it of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay. Uh, of course, uh, in contrast, of course, the other ozone, which we call the, uh, the troposphere or the ground level ozone, that is basically is a pollutant and is a danger one. And to mention this point here, okay, to mention this point here now that the lower atmosphere, or, or, what, or, or what we call it, or known as the troposphere ozone, okay, is, an important, okay, as you mentioned to you, air pollutant. Okay, and of course, to mention also it's known, okay, to damage, vegetation, okay, 
material and even human health. <clears throat> Okay. And to mention this point here as a matter of fact, that ozone removed from the atmosphere, I mean, it's been taken away, that ozone, put it down here. Okay. is uh, removed from the atmosphere okay simply of course by as a matter of fact I have a contribution here uh, in a point so that it's easier for you one as interaction with organic, with other gases. Okay. The other way, as a matter of fact, by also organic vapors, it may react with it. Okay. And ultimation and terrestrial and aquatic okay surface that also will take it and in the aquatic surface including vegetation okay so these are the uh, the method in which, or the, uh, in which basically that the ozone is being taken uh, and do its effect, okay? Uh, now I'm going to give a little bit more detail to talk about the impact and how this reaction of what you call of the ground level ozone or, or what you call it, the troposphere ozone. So subtitle here, the ground level, Ozone. <clears throat> uh, to mention one point here, of course, important that the ground level ozone O3, okay, simply to mention is the most Okay, damaging. Okay, of the so called okay, uh, which is in the air known as the photochemical. And we're going to go in detail about this what it's doing for the photochemical air pollutant. Okay. In combination with this, of course, less important. Put down here. Are. Uh, we have, of course, there are other chemicals going to mention to you with now. We have this list of what we call, called peroxy. Acetyl nitrate. This is why. Okay, acetyl nitrate. 
okay? Peroxyacetyl nitrate, usually we use this abbreviation, P-A-N, but of course better to use all the word here. And then the other one we have here also, hydrogen. Peroxide, which is basically, it is, as you know, H2O2, okay? And also we have an other, so can the air and other, oxidant gases. Okay. Now, the importance of these gases is what it is, because usually these are produced, as I mentioned to you, by the interaction in the atmosphere. I'm going to mention to you here. And that's when we, when we say secondary pollutant and the primary pollutant. When we mention secondary pollutant, they are not produced from the ground, they are happening in the air. To mention to you this one. These chemical, are you following me okay there? Okay, now these chemicals, okay, are considered are secondary pollutants. Okay, and of course secondary pollutant, that means, that means to explain it here, that means these chemicals, okay, are not emitted to the atmosphere Okay, as the primary pollutant. So that you know what is the difference between primary pollutant and, okay, uh, like for example, primary pollutant, you consider for example, the sulfur here, like, or do we talk about like SO2? And what about the nitrogen and NO3 nitrate? So these consider a primary pollutant because they are coming from the ground, okay? Now, to make, so basically this, this is, it give us the difference between the secondary pollutant here and a primary uh, pollutant. And now I'm going to explain the secondary pollutant because in reality they develop in the air. Okay, just put it down here for you. Still, you see it properly, I guess. Okay, now, to mention here, okay. Uh, to continue, of course, after this, instead, I mean, instead, I mean, about, I'm talking about this secondary pollutant. Instead, I mean, the secondary pollutant, I'm going to put down here so that you don't, okay, are synthesized. Okay, within the atmosphere, sorry, within uh, the atmosphere, okay, uh, by the photochemical reactions, by photo. chemical reactions, okay? And what happened here, these are required two things to mention to you, okay, by photochemical uh, uh, reactions that requiring <clears throat> okay, light use the light, okay? And what happened here, and now these chemicals, I'm going to mention this point here now. These, okay, proceed 
at faster rates. Okay, at faster rates. Okay, and result. Okay, and build up. of the ozone which of course in this case the, the ground level ozone now what happened here if nitrate the NO3 as a primary and hydrocarbons okay are present okay in high concentration in high, this is high concentration. So basically this is the result basically when the nitrate and hydrocarbon, which it comes to that by, by the action of the anthropogenic factor, then these react in the atmosphere and produce for us as a matter of fact to call this damaging ozone or the damaging ground level. I think you finish from this one. Okay, going to continue here. Okay, as I mentioned to you that uh, uh, are present in a high uh, concentration, which is simply to mention basically a condition. Okay, which is basically typically. Okay, a due to anthropogenic emission. And that's why basically when you have the cars and other things and goes, uh, that would happen here, okay? Uh, here I'm going to mention some area, for example, in Canada, which is basically it has a high concentration of ozone. Okay, did you follow this okay? Now to mention, for example, uh, in Canada, okay, the regions, okay, that most often experience what you call experience ozone uh, pollution, okay, are uh, known as uh, uh, the lower Fraser Valley. Okay. And basically this one occur in basically in Southwestern British Columbia. Okay. And also in other area, which is, and also in the Windsor, Quebec City corridor. called city corridor okay and basically and also the southern of maritimes and southern maritimes okay Uh, this is basically according 
it could be reduced now because uh, uh, this is according to the issues of what you call uh, by Inver uh, Environmental uh, Canada in 1999. And to make you the source of that basically Environmental Canada. Nineteen ninety-nine. Okay. Uh, now, of course, what happened here in case of the lower? Uh, 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 so, yeah, because I'm going to, uh, to explain for you example what's happening in this. You remember when you called about what you call this uh, uh, atmospheric inversion with occur in the city? That is to make the reason. For example, and why is occurring? For example, the factor helping in the lower Fraser Valley. To make sure this point here, I think I have two minutes here. Now, the lower uh, Fraser Valley, to see how it was a coastal, okay, lowland, okay, lowland, bounded, Uh, by mount, my mountains, okay, uh, to the east, okay, and this is result, uh, uh, okay, because of that, is it frequently, okay, a uh, subject Uh, because you remember when we talk about the cities, uh, if it's high pollution, uh, what you call, and then the carbon result to the pollution settle in the city, and that you call it frequently subject, which is known as to atmospheric inversion. Inversions. Okay, and also, and receives because of that, and receives, sorry, uh, large um, emission, okay, of ozone, okay, the precursors that you, okay. From, okay, the greater, okay, Vancouver area. To the west. Okay. You follow that? I just one line before I would end my lecture to give you how much concentration sometimes occur in this lower valley. This, of course, explain the condition why that occur, uh, resulting of this uh, what you call the what you call the atmospheric inversion. We talk about it here, and to mention to you, in this case, that some places, okay, in the lower, the Fraser uh, Valley, okay, have a maximum, okay, of all three concentration, ozone awesome concentration, okay, of about, which is quite high, 100 part per million. You follow that? Of course, later on, of course, the government, even in Canada and USA, they uh, they put a rule how to reduce that. I'm going to talk about that next lecture. Did you follow that? Oh, just give me a second here. Somebody is giving a chat. See what's going to see here.
Oh, okay. Did you miss something? If you missed something, let me know. Did you feel the lecture okay today? I'm asking you, I stop now here, okay? I know it's quite a bit of material, but uh, the, uh, we have to know these things in the environment. Any question, please? Or do you want something or, okay? Can you just move the paper over a bit more centered? Just give me a second. Uh, like this one? Like this? Yeah, that's good, thank you. Okay. Anybody missing something? Let me know, please. Okay. Anyway, I think, uh, Laura, did you manage to get what you are asking for? Well, well, in that case, I guess, uh, good luck, and hopefully we'll talk to you, I guess, on uh, Tuesday. Uh, I don't think today I'm making no, what you call, we don't have a meeting for tutorial. Okay, because maybe some of you are doing their thesis or something like that, which is okay. So we'll talk about you next lecture and uh, good luck. Yes. I said no tutorial today, no. Okay, because I think I don't know about, but maybe some of you, maybe they're having their thesis for your thesis or anything thing to do, because usually they are having what you call the biology day is tomorrow, some of them tomorrow or Sunday this weekend. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, please, if you thank miss you. something, also send me an email, okay? What do you feel?